Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, we are going to focus on mapping cardinality in ER diagram. In the previous presentation, we have focused on mapping cardinality in DBMS and we have understood why do we need mapping cardinality. In this presentation, we are going to be very specific about how to represent the different types of mapping cardinality in ER diagram. Let's see the topics that we are going to learn in this presentation. We are going to just recapture about the mapping cardinality we have seen earlier. Then we are going to quickly recapture about the basic structure and components of the ER diagram. And finally, we will see the mapping cardinality in ER diagram. At first, let's quickly revisit the mapping cardinality, which we have already seen in the previous lecture. If you are directly watching this lecture, I would request you to watch this previous lecture to gain better insights about mapping cardinality. But here, I'm going to give you another perspective about this mapping cardinality. Mapping cardinality is also known as cardinality ratio. So what it does, it is used to express the number of entities to which another entity can be associated via relationship set. It means it is a way of specifying the design because in the design phase only we are going to determine this. So mapping cardinality is actually a way of specifying in the design that the maximum number of relationship and entity can be engaged in. That is what is actually called as mapping cardinality. In DBMS, it is playing an important role because the complex design can be simplified with the help of mapping cardinality by specifying the cardinality ratio. Also, this cardinality ratio in DBMS or even in the ER diagram, it plays an important role because it helps in creating an organized relationship so that we can know how one entity is related or associated with another entity. When we implement this properly, this also helps in achieving a well-structured query execution plan. In chapter 1, when we dealt about database architecture, we have understood the importance of query execution plan. The better the plan, the better the outcome. Because we are ultimately going to store and retrieve the data. At times, we are going to perform a join operation and retrieve the data. So in all these circumstances, if we provide the exact cardinality ratio or a cardinality number, then it helps in achieving a well-structured query execution plan which saves a lot of our execution time. And this is obvious because this is most useful in describing binary relationship set. This is possible only when it is a binary relationship set because one entity is going to be related with or associated with another entity. So obviously, at least two entities are required. That's the basic of cardinality ratio. Let's now move on to implement this with the help of an ER diagram. So here is the component. Though there are multiple conventions in representing the ER diagram, we are going to take this approach and we are going to bring this into this page. So we will represent the cardinality ratio here. What are the different types of mapping cardinalities? Number one, it is one to one. Number two is one to many. Number three, many to one. And number four, many to many. At first, let's focus on one to one. Can you see here, this is one and this is one. So, instructor advises student is having a one-to-one -one mapping cardinality. What does it mean? It means one instructor or an instructor can advise exactly one student. At the same time, one student can have one advisor only. This is an example for one-to-one -one mapping cardinality. I told you in this mapping cardinality, I am going to represent this with the numbers. In case if this is not a number, here there will be an arrow, here there will be an arrow. It means this is one to one. Some authors or some conventions use arrows as a mapping cardinality notation. But here I am going to be specific with the number. Another example if I want to say for this one to one is one department is headed by one head of the department or HOD. So what example we have seen? This is an example for one to one mapping cardinality. Let's see the second type, which is one too many. Remember, one too many. So remember, when we say one too many, one will be in this side, n will be in this side. So if we want to represent this with arrow, we have to use an arrow here. And it will be without an arrow. So if we represent like this, then it is one too many. So what's the explanation for this? One instructor can be an advisor for many students. So one instructor, I mean this instructor, can be an advisor because the relationship is advisors. 
for many students. In other words, a student can have only one advisor at the maximum, but one instructor can be an advisor for many students. Another example, one department has many faculty members. So this is the example for one to many. Coming to the third type of mapping cardinality, which is many to one. Now you see, one is here and n is here. It may be n or m, whatever it is. But here it is one. It means many to one. What is the equivalence for this? It means an instructor, I mean one instructor, may advise one student only because this is n. But a student may have many advisors. If you want arrow-based notation, this side no arrow and this side with arrow. It means many to one. Another example for this, many faculty members can work for a single department. We are done with the third type of mapping cardinality. Let's move on to the last type, which is many to many. This is many to many. You can use M here or N here. This can be M here or N here. Where M and N may be equal or may not be equal. What is the explanation? An instructor may advise many students. A student may have many advisors. It's many, many on both the sides. This is many to many mapping cardinality. Another example is many employees can work on many projects. Then how to represent this without M and N? When we don't have an arrow on any side, then it is obviously many to many. That's it guys. What we have learnt in this presentation? We have revisited the mapping cardinality. We have understood the basic structure and component with the help of ER diagram. And also we have understood the mapping cardinality representation in ER diagram. Though mapping cardinality has some advantages like complex design can be simplified, it has one main disadvantage where no specific number can be set as the maximum. Then what's the alternative for this? The participation constraints. We are going to see about participation constraints in the next presentation. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.